JavaScript testing is a young field that's still growing, but there are a lot of really solid tools out there that you can use right now to help improve your code. Intimidated by testing or worried that it's going to add a bunch of work to your day? No worries. We're going to start simple, and I think you'll see how testing can reduce the amount of time and work it takes to get things up and running, rather than add to it. Today we're going to be going over the basics of test-driven development, which is a development approach in which you write failing tests first, then write the code that will make them pass. This is a really interesting approach and it takes a bit to wrap your head around it, but it's valuable in part because tests are written in plain English, or your spoken slash written language of choice, which usually makes it easier to articulate what your code is supposed to do than the actual programming language would. Have you ever written pseudocode? Basically a bunch of comments explaining the code you're about to write to help you think it through. Tests are like that, except they actually, well, test the code once it's written. So for starters, we need a testing environment. I'm going to use Jest, which is popular in the React world and beyond, but you could use Mocha or Jasmine or several others. Each has its pros and cons, and each has its own syntax, though they're all pretty similar. I like Jest because it's simple to set up and use, and the assertion syntax is easy to write. More on that latter in a bit, but first let's do the whole setting up thing. I'm going to assume for this tutorial that you're familiar enough with Node.js for me to not need to explain too much. If you're not, or you'd like a refresher, check out JS Quick Hits 31, 32, and 33, which should give you more than enough info to proceed. Right, so with Node installed and ready to go, head for a terminal window or command prompt. Create a new folder in which to store this project, cd to that folder, and type the following. This is going to lead you through a series of prompts. Doesn't really matter what your answer for these since we're not going to be publishing anything. The only one that matters is when it asks for the command to run tests. We'll get to that in a second. Oh, you should also say yes to index.js for the entry point. Looks good to me. When that's done, it'll create a file called package.json that contains all of the info you just provided. You can ignore it for the purposes of this lesson. Just type npm install jest. Let that do its thing. Slowly. So very slowly. And we're done. Either run touchindex.js or switch over to your text editor of choice and create index.js there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. While we're at it, let's add index.test.js too. First, back in index.js, add this code. Save it. That's obviously not going to do much for us right now, but that's fine. We'll write some failing tests, then write code that makes them pass in index.js. So to write the tests, first we're going to need some data. Switch over to index.test.js and add this code. Note that we're importing our filter users function via require so that we can run our tests against it. Then we've got a bunch of user data, most of it not terribly robust, but it'll work for this example. Next up, let's write a failing test. Do you see how this works? We run a top level test function which takes two arguments, a description and the actual test to run, an inline anonymous function. We then build an assertion Specifically, we are asserting that running filter users on the user's array with a blank string for the filter parameter should return the entire user array, which is four users long, so it'll have a length of four. You can get as picky as you want with your assertions. Not convinced that checking for length is enough? That's cool. Add more expect lines. Just supports a ton of assertions like string containing or to be falsy. You can see a whole list at jest.io slash docs. Let's run our test. Save this file. Switch back to the terminal and type npm test. 
I screwed up at the beginning of this video and told you to type test here, but of course I meant jest here. Let's try that again. We get a big bunch of output showing our test has failed, but these lines are probably the most important. Matched error received value must have a length property whose value must be a number. Received has type boolean, received has value true. We're expecting that something has a length property, but our function's only returning true. Let's fix that. Head over to index.js. Now, I'm betting you already have in mind how to build a function that works for a whole bunch of test scenarios, but for this week, we're just going to make our very first test work. Then next week, we'll do a bunch more testing and refactoring. So, change our function to look like this. Done, save, rerun. Hooray, we get a passing test. I bet you can see the problem though. This is always going to return all of the users no matter what we pass to the filter value. Next week we're gonna fix that and make our function and our testing a lot more robust. See you then.